What is up, everybody? This is Marshall Lee of DonkeyJawProjects.com. Marsh makes comics. And today, um, I wanted to talk about how nice guys and girls, nice women, nice men, can actually win um, on the internet. And uh, before we get into that, my buddy Peter, a, a nice guy, a friend of mine, Peter uh, Palmiotti, has a message for you guys to check out. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. So, Paladin asks, any tips for an aspiring comic creator? Boy, oh boy. I think um, I'm going to have to go, but I'm going to definitely ask uh, Paladin, you know, maybe even ask other comic creators that you really, really respect and like the work of. Even comic creators like uh, we got Peter Palmiotti in here. We've got Ryan Wynn in the room. Um, there's a lot of other creators too in the room. Uh, talk to them and, 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 and learn. And if you've got specific questions, especially, they can probably help you out. Those are, those are some really talented folks that, uh, that are part of this chat right now. And also any alternative creator, feel free to reach out to them as well. But try to always be as specific as possible with your questions. This way we know how to help you in the best ways we can. Awesome. So speaking about nice guys, who's nicer than Mr. Uh, Peter Semitti? Or who's nicer than uh, Creed and Peter Palmiotti who are here on with me now? How are you guys doing? Doing great. <laughs> I'm doing good, Marsh. Making some art. Awesome. You guys want to shout out uh, what you'd like people to check out of yours? Go ahead, Hello, Creed. <laughs> <laughs> We're too nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm working on the uh, anthology project. Um, my story is the Griffin, so I got all four pages uh, roughed in pencil, and I'm gonna fine tune it a little bit and get into inking today on my uh, YouTube channel. Just uh, type in Peter Pomiani on YouTube, and you'll find me. And I am working on, by very popular request, another Inhumanoid sticker. Um, and uh, all my stickers and art are on infinitecoolness.com. Awesome. And the links are in the description. Um, so definitely go check those guys out. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, basically this whole kind of it's kind of like the environment, the climate of the internet, the climate of YouTube. I am going to focus a little bit on YouTube because that's the part of the internet that I spend the most time on. Um, but um, basically, I kind of wanted to um, kind of contrast a few, couple different approaches. Um, so basically, there is... Um, you know, there's a lot of, especially, and again, a lot of my audience, obviously, Marsh Makes Comics, this is a comic channel. Um, a lot of us are in the comic book community. And, um, you know, there's been, let me just put it this way. When I first got into being involved in the comic community, specifically like the indie comic community and stuff like that, um, it seemed like, I just ran into nothing but nice people. You know, it was always like, you know, you have a question, you can go and ask somebody and they'll be helpful. Like the example we just saw, you know, what, what we just witnessed with uh, Peter Semitti shouting out Peter um, and some other creators, like that's exactly what I've, for the most part, uh, witnessed. And one thing that's really cool about the 100 Days of Making Comics started by Kevin Cross is the group that has been fostered through that has also been that kind of community, a really positive, awesome community. Um, we've had very little bumps down the road with this this thing, and, and I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm proud to have been able to be involved and to, be, to get to know um, all the people, the other people involved as well. Um, I definitely have become very good friends with a lot of different people comic creators because of it um so you know that's really cool and you know so it's been a really positive experience from for me now you know a couple years ago 
a year, maybe a year ago to a couple of years ago now, um, there's been some kind of things rising up that have kind of changed the climate of, of the comic community. And I'm not going to get too deep into that, but, um, you know, we've all heard of comics gate. We've all heard of this talk between them and SJWs and, you know, this whole kind of back and forth stuff. And now the comic community has become, a little less friendly and and there's always been unfriendly things there's always been the stories of people going to comic conventions and showing their portfolios and being disappointed that their favorite creator just like tore them a new something and um <laughs> and uh you know there's always been other things like that as well and, and certain creators have different kind of reputations and stuff. So there has been that kind of thing. But for the most part, it's always been kind of a happy place until recently where sometimes I've even heard people talk about being afraid to be involved in the comic community because they don't want to deal with all that crap, which is crazy to me. Um, and also just online, the internet, com like, uh, community is also this is what this is this isn't just about comics this is just about kind of the the kind of crap we see going on in the internet no matter what community you're in it seems like no matter what community you're in eventually there's going to be a gate surrounded about it <laughs> there's a comics gate there's a you know i think there's now a anime gate that started there's a gamer gate you know whatever like they might there might be other controversies too but it always tends to be you know it, it tends to kind of go around these kind of political views and and stuff like that and uh, you know the thing is is the positive uh culture is still there but we're definitely being it are it feels sometimes like we're being drowned out by more um kind of causing this rift or whatever um which whatever it is what it is tides kind of things go up and down or whatever but i just wanted to mention um i just wanted to just something little that i kind of an observation that i thought of and um i won't mention names but there's a certain person um that rhymes with uh stephen dan piper um <laughs> and um everybody probably knows who i'm talking about but um you know, I don't have any problem with the dude or anything. I'm not saying anything negative about the guy, but he obviously brings up controversy. And, you know, I go over to his YouTube channel and he's got 112,000 subscribers. Cool, whatever, like that's cool. I enjoy some of his videos. Sometimes I get annoyed with him, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> There's another guy who even started before him. Um, and apparently his his name is different now. I didn't realize it, but anyways, he's got 96,000 subscribers and there's a bunch of other people who are kind of involved in the whole, you know, ki comic skate thing or, and there's probably people on the other side too, kind of bringing up controversy and stuff. And, you know, they got kind of a lot of subscribers, but then there's something happened recently that I think is really interesting. Um, a certain other YouTuber who goes by the name of Mr. Mark Crilly, um, he just hit 3 million subscribers. Now, of course, these subscribers, you know, that that doesn't tell the worth of a man or a woman, you know. If you have subscribers, it is what it is. Like, that doesn't mean you're better or worse or anything. None of that really is a thing. Um, but I just find it interesting that Mark Crilly, you know, recently got to 3 million subscribers. Now, there's a lot of caveats here. He was there. He was one of the first people on YouTube doing comics. So that's a big part of it. But he only, he didn't get there because he's not, he doesn't have an awesome channel. He does have an awesome channel that has great content. Always a nice guy. I've never seen his face. I don't know if he's ever shown his face, but I've never seen his face. So it's like, you don't even have to have your face on the screen, which is interesting. Um, but, you know, I think it, it's helpful to do that, but whatever. Um, but he hit 3 million and it's like, that is so awesome. And he's like, I don't know, to me in some ways, he's like the Mr. Rogers of comics. 
<laughs> you know, he's just like a nice guy who's got a lot of helpful tips for everybody. And, um, you know, there's other people like that too. Um, I can think of now, now she's not a comic person, but Bailey J is an art channel and she's got 1 million, 100,000 subscribers. Um, I've always seen her as kind of a pretty nice person. She's just a nice lady doing some stuff that she likes and she's honest and authentic. And then there's like people like Jake Parker, Jason Brubaker. They have, they're kind of more closer to um, the first examples I put, but you know, they are doing the same type of impact with sometimes a lot of times independent comics and they're nice people. And they don't probably have to deal with as much drama um, you know, with all these people kind of coming after them. Now there's one example who does have to deal with that drama and is still a nice guy and doesn't deserve that kind of drama, which would be the guy who we just brought up, Peter Samedi. Unfortunately, you know, he just happened to catch the drama a little bit and it, it sucks because he's not about that, you know. Um, you know, but luckily for him, it's done nothing but help him. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. It has done things that have been harmful, unfortunately and sadly. Um, but it also has helped him, I guess, fortunately for him. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to make the point that nice guys can win. Nice women can win. Um, you don't have to be a jerk. <laughs> now, if you want to play that angle and be kind of the jerk and, and – you know, be antagonistic and stuff. That's fine. I mean, there's a place for that. I think there's a, there, that discussion and bringing up those kind of things is somewhat needed. I just think it goes overboard a lot though. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's all I really wanted to kind of put out there in the beginning. What do you guys think about, about all this craziness that happens? Well, I, I definitely, um, you know, I was thinking of dropping off of YouTube for that reason. Like, you know, it's like, I don't want to see all this BS when I, when I go to the channel and, uh, it seems like for a while it was all that was popping up. And, uh, what I, what I did was curate my YouTube a little bit. And, uh, now I don't see it as much, you know, you could say not interested on, certain videos and mm. uh seems to be much better at the moment um you know there's always going to be craziness going on at youtube i mean it's, it's a billion two billion videos up there uh and so many so many people making videos um but you focus on on what is positive i mean that's that's what i try to do in my life and it, that's what i do in my work um yeah, I don't, I don't want to get mixed up in, in you know, stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. And, I mean, I think that's a, that's a good point. Like, you know, if people are worried, you know, they, they see this craziness going on in comics and they're worried that they're going to attract kind of that situation. I mean, if you don't put it out there, you're not going to attract it. <laughs> Most likely in most cases, um, you know, in, in, even in just this world, like, and in, in all this stuff, like I always say, you know, I'm a Christian and I tend to lean on the conservative side. I'm not really a conservative, but I tend to lean that way. And, you know, because of that, some people get a lot of flack. Some people get you know, taunted or whatever, they get a lot of need negative feedback. Maybe one day I will, I don't know. But for the most part, I've had nothing but friendliness with people, people who totally disagree with everything that I would stand for, you know, and, and I've created friendships with those people. Like, I don't get this crazy divisiveness and, and anger and hostility because I don't put it out there. You know, I try to be a friendly person. I try to be authentic. I try to be nice to people, you know, and so you can go out there. It, it's really what you put out that dictates what kind of uh, feedback you're going to get. Usually. I mean, there are people who do go on the attack too, sometimes for silly reasons, but 
for the most part, you can kind of control uh, that kind of situation. Um, what, what do you think about this whole idea, You're, Mr. Creed? <laughs> The thing I like, like you were talking about our community, like our, especially I say our community because I'm, I'm a weird part of this hundred group, but I'm not actually in it. Mm. Uh, Gaz and Mike actually said I'm an honorary member kind of thing, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I feel but this same. year I'm going to change that anyway. But uh, what I like is our, our the art community, the core of our art community, nobody's really gotten into any of that negative stuff. Which mm. I like that. Like we're positive people. We we're looking towards the light instead of back to the darkness yeah and i think that's a great point too like um i uh i mean that's one thing i did want to actually emphasize here so i'm glad you brought that up is um you know the 100 days of making comics like you're looking for you don't like what's going on in the comic community and it's annoying and stuff um you know come on over to the hundreds <laughs> You know, because uh, we got we so far we got a pretty good thing going here, and and it's a real community. It's not. I hear it all the time. I hear, you know, um, the art casters. They've been interviewing uh, people who are being who are involved with the anthology lately, and I've heard it just from so many other people who have had involvement with the hundreds. Is, you know, you get into these different Facebook groups or different kind of. Uh, um, communities and you're like you know you get into them because you want to have that community and you want to get some help and you want to be able to help other people and and you know most of the time you go to these communities and it either ends up just being a place for people to spam or you know it's, it's just not it's a ghost town it, or it's just like it's just not a great place or there's like this kind of negative stuff going on and none of that stuff is happening happening over in the hundreds it's all supportive people are friendly um you know for the most part i mean there's been little tiny hiccups but most of most of those things i think most people haven't even noticed um an idiot you know pretty much the as good as it can as i've seen it get so far on the internet so yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a really cool place to be, and again, I'm proud to be a part of it, um, for sure. Let's see uh, what's going on in the chat. We got James in there. What's up, man? We got Mario. How you doing? Um, cooking hey right guys. now. Cool. What are you, what are you cooking, man? <laughs> I'd love to hear. Um, I want some food. <laughs> uh, let's see. He says it's going to be a great show with great guests. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, art exploration with Mark Muir. I like that title. Very uh, descriptive. I definitely want to go check out what you're doing. Uh, what's up, man? Um, James says Mark Crilly did a vid where he was standing in front of a class teaching them how to draw. He had a pic of himself as an avatar too. <laughs> All right, we'll have to find that video and see what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Devante Edwards, yo, yo, what's up? <laughs> So yeah, have you guys ever seen the face of Mark Crilly? Uh, I don't think I have. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I definitely want to look that up. Uh, he is super nice and and just always top professional. Uh, one guy who doesn't YouTube um, anymore. I think he was trying to make a comeback at some point. Uh, but Will Terrell. Oh yeah. Um, love the guy. Love his work. Love his videos. Um, he's, he's, I think he's Warner Brothers. He's working in animation, I, I believe. Um, so he's not YouTubing, but you could always go on his channel and check out all his old videos. And he's always laughing and drawing and it was always a fun time. Really, really sweet guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish he did more videos. He's definitely fun to watch. And again, another, and I think this is a big part of it too, is like, you know, he's another authentic person. Like, if you're just nice, but it's like you can tell it's like a facade, and and like you're you're playing nice type of thing, that actually doesn't work. Um, you know, it's you have to be an authentic person. And the thing is, is there have been other YouTubers um, who 
they they kind of are bigger channels because they're kind of grumpy <laughs> and that's kind of okay too i think and and um and actually you can be grumpy and still be kind of nice <laughs> in some ways it's, it's kind of a weird kind of dynamic but you know you the point is is you don't have to get into like i don't know like negative topics or to um like con topics that like divide and, and cause people to have these like crazy reactions and stuff and again if you do like that kind of thing and you want to be you know a howard stern type or something like that like go forth and conquer go ahead and do your thing i mean there's definitely an audience for that i mean i do take in some of that content sometimes um but when they get too out of the hand i kind of not into it but um you know it can be funny it can be fun you know so i get it i get why people get into that stuff and also you know for some people it's very meaningful because they're kind of fighting against something that they feel like is um needs to be fought against so you know whatever it is i don't i personally don't feel like i want to be fighting i want to be working towards something good so you know and again it's easy to like make it look like i'm picking on comic skate and I, i'm not because there are is that aspect as well you know they are I believe they say they're trying to do good and make good comics and stuff like that, which I think they, they truly authentically are, um, you know, but then, you know, it, it's just there's certain lengths that they go to that I wouldn't like to go to. And, and there's there's definitely a way to go about it where you don't have to be um, kind of causing a ruckus. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's what I find is like, you know, it's easy, you know. It's it's not hard to to lift everybody else up. You're not you're not you know biting into your own career to uh, praise other people. Um, you know, we're 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 in comics. We're in, into art. We're into YouTubers. You know, we're we're excited about people who do it great, and. Um, it's just spread the positivity. Why, why, why get into the mud and, and you know, wrestle? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think everybody can have something they can grumble about or complain about or be negative about. But if they think about it, that's going to drag their mood down while they're doing it. And at the same time, I'm sure they have five or ten things they love they could do a video about. Why not just be positive? Yeah. And actually, I do think it is kind of cool to have a rant. Like, some of my favorite videos are rant videos, you know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you don't have to, like, there's a, way, there's a way to go about it that's less antagonistic. You know what I mean? Like, if you're doing it for the sake to cause a ruckus, there's, there's a difference between that and just kind of venting, you know. Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> It's super funny. I was I was actually gonna do a negative video about something, and it doesn't even matter what. But I was getting ready to do it, and then you posted a video saying, "Don't do negative videos." And then <laughs> I was, uh, and I was like, "Okay, I think he's reading my mind." And then he said, "And especially if you don't show your face and you don't use your name, I'm like, he's talking about me. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Stop spying on me, Marsh." <laughs> So I just went, yeah, Burst is right. I'm not making a negative video. Why put negativity out there? I'm reading your mail, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, and again, yeah, I don't know. I guess I, I don't have to kind of continue to go over the same point, but I, I don't I, – I really am not talking about any specific person. I mean, I did mention some specific people, but those are just the obvious examples, you know. I don't really have anybody else really in mind or anything. So <laughs> please don't feel anybody feel like, you know, I'm talking to you or something. <laughs> um, I, I, I think of a, a fictionary character, but Oscar Madison from the odd couple, mm -hmm. you know, he was a grouch and he complained, um, but he was lovable, you know, yeah. and you could, you could do both. <laughs> a lovable grump. 
<laughs> yep. Good old Quincy. Yep. <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to kind of check on with that. Um, but, you know, I think it's, I think it's cool though. Like, um, that there are like awesome positive examples too. So like, I do really celebrate, you know, people like Jake Parker or, or, um, Jason Brubaker and even Jason Brubaker is interesting. You know, he doesn't really talk about some of these crazy, uh, you know, issues in comics, but he has had the odd video here or there that has been either a rant or, you know, um, you know, talked about specifically about, you know, comic skate or something like that. And he, he, the thing I like about him is he kind of does what I would do and what I do. I think, I think I do do, which is he kind of brings in his own take. Um, sometimes he has a, an opinion. He's not afraid to say his opinion, but he doesn't like focus on that as his main thing. And he also, you know, I don't know. I think he's fair about it. And I think um, he he also doesn't let like kind of the sway of either side of an issue dictate the way he feels about a certain thing. Um, he has his own thoughts. Um, and that kind of, unfortunately, with some of the stuff you can see, like there's definitely followers of certain people who are kind of mimicking what they're doing and don't seem to have their own thoughts about things, which is, it's like, you know... <laughs> You, you, you. Maybe you see that this person is doing this, and they're getting great results. You know, I just want to put an encouragement out there to people: like, you don't have to do that. There, that, that's kind of what the point of this video is. Is like, you, you can make a difference in your own way. You don't have to do kind of controversy to get attention. That is a way that some people get attention, but I know for me, it, it doesn't go well with my DNA. I'm not. Like, I don't like that kind of attention, and I don't thrive on it. I um, I don't have a thick skin like some people do. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I wouldn't be able to hint like that. Like, the kind of attention that some of these people have gotten for being the way they are, like, for being kind of controversial, that kind of attention for me, like, I wouldn't be on YouTube anymore. You guys would not see Marshall anymore, because I would... I would go into my hole and like hide because that's not something I thrive on. That's something that bothers me. And I think too deeply about it and I would just get too much into my head. I wouldn't be able to deal with it, you know? Yeah. I, you know, I sort of think of it. It's like, I'm not going to do anything today that I wouldn't do 10 years from now. Mm. You know, it's like, if it, I think of it long-term, it, if I do it today, can I picture myself doing it, you know, over and over and over? And yeah, I don't want to get caught up in that whole whirlwind of, of disaster, you know. <laughs> it's like uh, the one of the, one of the things like Comic Skate is, is they egg on is all this uh, Star Wars fandom mm -hmm. and negativity surrounding that, and it's like. Jesus, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's just crazy. It's just, honestly, I mean, it's kind of just uninteresting to me too. Like, I mean, it was the first few, you know, I was following his channel for a while and he was doing stuff that was more comic related and it was actually really cool. Like, I was like, this is awesome. Like I'm learning some stuff from the industry that I don't know because I'm not, you know, in the industry and i also am learning like you know some stuff from a, a real pro you know and you know that was really cool and then he started doing the odd you know star wars video i was like oh this is hilarious like <laughs> there is some truth to that like he's somebody is actually talking about some of this stuff and then he did another video and another video and another video. And then he just, it was like every day there was like more than one video about the same thing. I'm like, I even commented on his thing, you know, early on, I was like, um, I don't remember what I said, but I was like, basically dude, like enough with the star Wars stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he just kept going and never stopped. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm bored. You know, <laughs> I've had enough with that. 
negativity, I find, is a demotivator, too. So if you're trying to make art, it helps you to be positive because then you're positive and you're spreading that around and that helps other people be creative. It's just a, it's I'd, a I'd rather point. do it that way than demotivate anybody. Yeah. Her, motivation's hard enough to come by. Yeah, that's that's a great point for sure. Um, we definitely don't want to do it. We have enough working against us. We definitely don't want to add to that. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. Devante says, I saw Mark Curley's face. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> James TSR, Will had that addictive laugh. You couldn't help but join in. I know. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. Mario says, roasted chicken with potatoes, rice, drinking wine, as usual. <laughs> and I'm a little <laughs> late. Um, 1.15 oh, p.m. in Portugal. Gotcha. Yeah, the um, time changed last night. I woke up, and I'm like, oh, wow, I slept in. And I was like, oh, I didn't really sleep in that much. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Sounds good. I, I have to... I'm going to make something for dinner tonight. I think I'm going to make uh, – we've been eating, like, um, just burger patties without the buns. Um, and then we'll have something with it or whatever. And I've been putting, like, these crazy, like, spices and, like, Worcestershire sauce in it and stuff like that. And it's kind of really tasty. So I think that's what I'm going with again this tonight. <laughs> Not that anybody cares, but <laughs> – You're making me hungry. <laughs> Something uh, kind of actually related to this because <laughs> there's been a, and I'm actually going to put out a video probably, hopefully tomorrow about this, um, but uh, something that's kind of related to all this craziness and, and uh, controversy, uh, you know, Captain Marvel came out this weekend, which, you know, hashtag Alita Challenge, go, even though I kind of screwed that one up because I went and saw Captain Marvel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, I'm a huge Alita fan and I am kind of on the chain of like, I don't, I want Alita to beat, you know, Captain Marvel on opening weekend or whatever. But, you know, uh, my brother-in-law asked me if, he, if I wanted to go and I just kind of wanted to hang out with him. So I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> um, and, you know, I don't know. Um, I know that uh, Creed saw it, and Peter, you didn't see it yet. I, I I saw both of them, so yeah, I saw it. Oh, you did see it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I heard Creed's thoughts on it, but uh, we want to hear it again on live. But um, let's. Uh, I guess let since it's still really early, let's go with no spoilers. And okay. um, yeah, let me know what you thought, Peter. Um, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, uh, t -t 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 -t. I don't know. You know, it's like everything affects everything. It's if if I'm in a good mood and go see a movie, then I like the movie that much more. So I, I was in a great mood when I saw it. So I really enjoyed it. I, I don't see any problem with it. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to Endgame and seeing her appearance in it. Mm. Um, so I know, you know, you guys have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, that's that's cool, man. Um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll hand it over to Creed and let's hear what you thought about it. Yeah, I kind of I kind of went into it after, let's see, all the reviews I, I watched, uh, people had to say like 10 times how great Brie Larson is as an actress before they said, before they said that they didn't like her in this movie. So I was like, I kind of went into this waiting to be disappointed, but uh, it, it didn't. It's, but it's, I don't know. It's not the best movie Marvel made, but I, it, and it's, it's weird. It was sort of not as cinematic as the rest of them. It seemed like a, a really, really good episode of agents of shield me sort of. Mm. But I did like it, and there's a, there's a couple things that bug me about it. But I mean, there's a couple things that are gonna bug you about anything. But yeah, yeah. it was entertaining, definitely. Cool. Um, did you see Alita? I haven't seen Alita. I'm kind of unsure about that because I don't like anime, but I do like action movies. So I, I and I do like sci-fi. So I probably will end up seeing it. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the anime aspect. Like, if you it, it like really doesn't have anything to do with like I, I don't know. Like, you could watch that movie and not know it's anime, and you would never know. You would really never know. I mean, there are the big eyes, but that's like one character, Alita, and you don't even think about it after like the opening scene. So. It's just, I mean, to me, it was akin to watching like Terminator 2 because it's by James Cameron, you know, and, and so I, I couldn't help but think about that. Um, and then something kind of more sci fi, I don't know, maybe like Star Wars or, or pick any like real sci fi type thing. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, don't let that aspect stop you for sure. Um, yeah. I I I went into Alita, you know, I saw Alita too, um, where I, I knew of the character, I knew of the anime, I never sat down and read it or, or watched the anime. Um, so, um, I loved it. Uh, I thought it was really well done. You know, I, I heard complaints online about it. Oh, it's just setting up a franchise. You know, I didn't feel that way at all. I thought it was a complete story that yes, they can continue, but I was I was totally satisfied with uh, what the story evolved into. Uh, it's a great character. It's just a great movie. You yeah, know? I th I heard that as well. That it's uh, you know, that oh, this is just a setup movie or whatever, and stuff like that but i i agree like i i think it was uh i thought it, i felt like it was a complete movie and i mean i think it could stand alone by itself if there's no second um movie but um i definitely want to see a second movie happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and to point out i was worried about like oh the, those eyes look insane uh i did hear they tweak tweak them a bit before the <laughs> you know, the, before they released it, um, I didn't have a problem with it at all. You know, it was like two seconds in and it was like, okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> you yeah. know, it just, it just worked. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that seems to be the consistent, con, uh, that seems to be what everybody else is saying. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of words. Um, consistent. yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know I, that that seems like everybody's pretty much agrees with that um from what i've heard and yeah i don't know it, it's definitely i mean i saw it twice i saw it in 3d and i saw it um regular um i didn't really mean to see it in 3d i, I kind of only see things in 3d by accident i don't really care about 3d but i actually saw um uh captain marvel in 3d as well but again i didn't I didn't even pay for the ticket or anything, so I <laughs> it wasn't really up to me. Um, it was actually it ended up being like a birthday treat. Like I I kind of forgot that he usually does something for my birthday, and mm -hmm. and so he kind of surprised me with that. So that was cool. Um, my brother in law brought me. I should say I don't know if I said that already, but <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I liked Captain Marvel. I mean, I love. You know, obviously, I love Alita, and I want Alita to do well. But there, there's some things that I thought were better in Captain Marvel than Alita. Actually, um, people talk a lot about the um, the CGI, um, or I mean, not the CGI, the um, the 3D stuff, which to me is not even that important of a consideration when you're watching a movie, like when you're reviewing it, because. Most people are not going to see it in 3D, no matter what. Like once once it's out of the theaters, they're not going to see it in 3D. So it kind of doesn't even matter. But at the same time, um, I thought you know people said, "Oh, this, you got to see it in 3D." Alita: Battle Angel, you got to see it in 3D. It's like James Cameron is the only one who can do it right, and this and that. And I thought the 3D um, Alita was just like I, it was not even needed. Like it, it didn't. There was nothing amazing about it that was not something I've seen in other 3D movies. And I actually thought the 3D actually was really good in Marvel, uh, Captain Marvel. Um, There's just a lot of cool stuff. So um, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I, you know, there's, 
I, I guess I'll get into more of my thoughts in the video I'm going to do. I actually already recorded it. Um, but I, you know, there, there's all the kind of the controversy around it and stuff. And, um, you know, there was that stuff in there that people are kind of don't want to see who, who are, you know, kind of against the movie. Um, there was definitely that stuff in there. Um, and it was kind of awkward and annoying um, to a certain degree. Uh, I think they could have done done it better. But, you know, whatever. Um, I, I kind of liked um, the Captain Marvel character. Like, there was times where I really liked her, especially, like, kind of in the beginning and the training scenes and stuff like that. Um, but, like, you know, I don't know. I feel like probably the... I almost feel like, and I said this in my other video that I'm going to put out, um, I almost feel like it would have been better if it was a Nick Fury movie. Like, the, I got more from him. <laughs> I, want, I want a movie of Nick Fury and that cat. Yeah. That, that's all. The, just him and the cat touring around, doing stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick Fury definitely shines in Captain Marvel. Um, you know, I always wanted to see more of Nick Fury, and we finally get more Nick Fury, uh, his younger self. So it was very guys, cool. What do you guys think about uh, the whole uh, explanation of of a certain specific thing feature of his? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm okay with it. You know, I I I, I could kind of bitch about it. Uh, you know, it's kind of like that's a spoiler. Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, I'm okay with it. I, I found that bit, bit kind of corny. It's, it just, it's almost like the person that wrote the movie went, I'm going to make a mark on Marvel's history, you know, yeah. like, make this movie important. And it's like this, it's not, it's kind of not yours to write that, but okay, fine, <laughs> whatever. I will yeah. say this. Um, it, it's almost teary eyed. Like the first three seconds in a movie, I loved. If you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah, the tribute to Stan Lee was like that was yeah that was the most emotional part. I I did get actually a little bit, or I, I I think I was getting a bit misty eyed, you know. And it was just a few seconds, but it was like ah, oh, they did that. Wow. And then uh, and then uh, his cameo, he was reading a, a Mallrat script, and Kevin Smith apparently broke down. That was awesome. That was crazy. I did not expect <laughs> that. Yeah. I, w I was like, you know, when Stanley passed, I was like, they have to do something or I'm going to just like scream bloody murder. And, uh, you know, it, was it wasn't my thought that I came up with. I, w I was like, you know, what they should do is like during his cameo, actually pause the film and say, in memoriam of Stanley. Yada yada, mm. but uh, I mean, you know that that was that was excellent. That was excellent. I love that. And I think with all the ability they have, like like how they de-aged uh, Samuel L. and stuff, they can definitely put Stan Lee in every Marvel movie from now on. Like it's not <laughs> like you know they could easily do it. Just get some guy, map Stan Lee on, and he can still be in the background in every movie. And I think they should. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They could. They could try. I don't know if they will or not. I, don't know. I know that I know that he's supposed to. He's recorded um, cameos for a decent amount of movies, so we're still going to see him a few times. Cool. Well, that's good to know. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to Endgame for sure. Um, I don't. Do you guys think that? Uh, you needed to see Captain Marvel to know, you know, to kind of prepare for Endgame. I, I personally don't think you really do. You wouldn't be lost, but I think you do gain a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's I how think I they're going to focus on a lot of the, like, the ra alien races and the, some of the stuff in this movie, I think, is going to be featured prominently in the next, in the, in Endgame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the actual comic story, so uh, you guys might have. And, and they usually vary from that, really. Well, like they, Civil War, they just use the name, so I mean. Hmm. 
It, it, it really depends, like, what they do next, because they could spin off from Captain Marvel and do the next sort of Avengers arc. Um, but for Endgame, you know, it's not necessary, but yeah, you do you do get a little extra insight into things. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, uh, again, yeah, I think I, I pretty much enjoy I was actually glad I went. And, um, I kind of hate that I went on opening weekend, but, <laughs> um, you know, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> I saw I saw it in two D. You know, you're mentioning three D. Um, I I think they they really like they do quality three D now, but because you know it's like my left eye is weak, mm. um, I really only use my right eye. So when I see three D currently, it's not really highly effective for me. Mm. So it's almost a waste of time. Gotcha. Yeah, and you know, it's I know I know other people feel the same way. It's like because they're not twenty twenty or then their eyes aren't at the same level. It it really just screws with them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I luckily don't know. You know, but you know, to be honest, even having good vision, like it, I it actually is kind of. It's usually a little bit of a distraction, um, and a, there is some things that feel sometimes almost out of focus, um, or I'm not sure if the focus, like if they did the focus right or whatever, because I'm like, oh, it just kind of is a little confusing. Um, but it didn't take me out that much, um, and yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed it, but I would, you know, I always prefer to see you know movies in the regular. Um, way that they're meant to be put out. So, I'm a big fan of 3D since I saw Cloudy with Chance Meatballs in the theater. And yeah. the, machine, the machine exploded and I dusted stuff off my shirt. I was like, okay, <laughs> you got me. You got me with 3D. Done. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. That's awesome, actually. Yeah, and I, I will say uh, both both of the, the movies uh, were excellent. It's just a lot of fun. I love having um, a chance to meet Bob. I really do. Yeah. One of my favorite movies. I, have, I wouldn't I think I would like it. I saw the movie about 50 times now. Like It's great. I've never really? Seen it. <laughs> oh, it's it's funny. It's fun. You know, I, I, I love a lot of CGI cartoon movies. and, and uh, It's definitely one that I saw and I was like, you know, I didn't think I would like this that much. I just kind of nothing else to watch at the time but it was like wow that was fun well i mean cgi and high, even high definition always looks better with cartoon movies you know that kind of you could just do so much more in that realm um you know you don't so, have the uncanny valley because you're you know you're doing cartoon anyway yeah exactly absolutely ah awesome all right, let's uh, let's see if the chat's got anything else going on here. Uh, let's see. Oh, looks like oh, that's right. So James said, "I think you guys are getting Comicsgate confused with EVS's channel. EVS is not Comicsgate. He's just a part of it. I don't like him, but I'm sympathetic to Comicsgate and what they've been through." Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I don't think I'm really getting it confused. I, I think, I think um, EVS is pretty darn synonymous with Comics Gate. He said he left Comics Gate and then he came back. I guess I don't know, but I mean, if there's, I, I heard, I watched a recent video of him and he again was basically like, "I am Comics Gate," <laughs> you know. So, it's like, <laughs> you know, you can't really separate the two, um, in my opinion, um, but. You know, to me, actually, the other people in Comics Gate sometimes are even worse than him. <laughs> Some of them are worse than him sometimes. And I, again, I'm not even saying that he's bad. Like, I, I do still even enjoy some of his content. 
um, once in a while. I don't watch it very often. Um, but, you know, again, to me, these are people who make comics, and that's why I like them. You know, anybody who makes comics to me is awesome um, to a certain degree. I mean, obviously, if you're not an awesome person, you're not an awesome person. But <laughs> there's certain <laughs> things that, you know, I don't like about people, of course. But, um, you know, I'm not going to split with you over, you know, some political silliness, you know, that's, that's why that's a big problem in, in, in the internet and in the world. Like the fact that people are letting political thoughts and ideologies divide them is ridiculous to me. In my opinion, it's just, it's you're you're almost being played by by politicians because the it's the politicians who kind of put these issues They're benefiting by the Congress. Yeah, yeah, they 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 put these issues in such a divisive frame on purpose to get votes. <laughs> you know, and it's like it that be, like, like Creed just said that benefits them. That doesn't benefit us, and and we're kind of being. It's easy to be kind of played by that because they play on stuff that you care about, you know, and stuff that is important issues. But again, it just it just goes too far, and I don't want to be in that realm. It makes me crazy. My I'm sure my blood pressure goes up, you know. It, <laughs> I don't need it, you know. Yeah, um, it's a, it's about positivity and negativity. For me, it doesn't matter if somebody's comics skate or not. It's are they wishing bad to people and ranting about other people and negative stuff, or are they being positive and saying, "Hey, I'm creating, and here's what I'm creating." That's the difference. Mm. So, comic skate to me is sort of irrelevant. It's positivity and negativity. That's what I follow and don't follow. Yeah, I mean, that's why I always love, and I, I really need to, you know. I, I, I need to get this shirt, but, you know, I love, uh, you know, Scott Circlin's haters hate, creators create, you know, it's such a great mantra. And um, I think that's where it's at. Like, to me, even if you have a strong opinion about something political, well, make an awesome comic about it. Like, that's one of the things, like, you know, with uh, with Marvel, and, and I didn't actually say this in the video I'm going to be publishing, and I kind of wish I did. Um, in Captain Marvel, um, you know, there's obviously a, politi a, a kind of a feminist thing going on there. There's there's little jabs in there and stuff. And to me, it's it's not like if you want to make a feminist movie, make a feminist movie. Like make it like make that a huge big theme and make it, do it so well that you convince me, <laughs> you know that you know, maybe there's something to whatever it is you're trying to say, you know? Um, and I, I already, you know, am, you know, empathetic to some of the issues. I mean, I, I'm totally down with women's rights and stuff like that. Um, you know, so the thing is, is like, but don't like put these little like jabs and, and stuff that are like more frustrating and more awkward than they are effective. Like, you know, female protagonists out there that are awesome that how kind of attack it in either a more subtle way or if you're gonna do it like do it hardcore and really make me care about it you know <laughs> there's there's the way kind of they handled it that that is one critique i have of captain marvel is i don't think they handled that well because they did make me interested in carol danvers you know brie larson i do think is actually a good actress and um you know they made me care about her a little bit, but then they had those little things and it's just like, it took me out of the movie and it was awkward yeah. and weird. You know, <laughs> it wasn't interesting. <laughs> the thing is, if they want her to be equal and powerful and whatever, just make her equal and powerful. Don't rant about how she's not, and it's a big battle and no, just make her that way. And then we'll accept it as a reality. You know, just, you don't have to rant about an issue, just change it. Yeah. And also, I mean, even in the parts where it was like this kind of jab, it's like it wasn't earned because it wasn't like somebody was treating her bad. Like there I didn't really see any like, she men says in her life spot. like treating her bad necessarily. Like <laughs> I mean, te technically there was, you see in the end sort of, but it wasn't like set up in that way. But then when they kind of it's like it's like a 
an a, a jab without the, the real setup. They didn't take the time to really set it up in an interesting way. That's exactly why it bugged me. She says something to a guy in this thing, and it's obviously like, I'm a powerful woman, and you're not going to keep me down. That's not what she said. I don't even want to. I'm not going to repeat. It's part of the movie. But right. she, like, got in the guy's face. And the thing is, he wasn't, like, giving her trouble about that. He's giving her trouble because, you know, whatever his agenda is, but it's not about that. So, like you said, that ha if if all along he was giving her trouble, like you're a woman, you can't do this and can't do that, and then she right. came back and go, I can do whatever I want. That matches, but he didn't say any of that. He wasn't, he didn't care if she was a woman or not. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I like the word you use matches. Agenda. Like the 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 payoff has to match the setup, and that's just not yeah. what happened. Yeah, yeah, it was forced. It was very forced. Um, so we got Mutt Man says, yo, what up? What up, yo? <laughs> hey, hey. Michael Lahitin? Something like that, La Lahitin? How you doing, man? Um, they might have to do a soft reboot to introduce the X-Men characters or retcon to bring them in somehow. Huh, that, that's, I'm kind of curious why you said that because, um, I don't think we quite, I'm not sure how that connected with what we were talking about, but <laughs> we were obviously talking talking about Marvel movies. And if you happen to be somebody who was watching my thread last night about X-Men on uh, Facebook, then maybe you're reacting to that too. Um, and it is related. So actually it'd be an interesting thing to bring up. I Every time I look at the X-Men franchise, I get so confused. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah, Sony, Sony made I, that into a, a mess to follow. Really yeah, did. like I and the thing is, is I enjoy most of the X Men movies, and but I, I just like I found out last night. I'm like, because we recently watched X Men First Class, and I was like, okay, that was really cool. Um, I really enjoyed it, and um, you know, I want to see more. You know, and I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you know, and then I found out like. Um, the Dark Phoenix is that same cast and everything. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I didn't realize that. I thought they were using kind of the old cast or whatever. So I'm like, okay, cool. And then I found out somebody somebody said something online about the X Men uh, first class trilogy. And I'm like, wait, trilogy? Wait, there was more with this cast? And I guess I haven't. I must. I thought I saw Days of Future Past, but I guess either I didn't or I didn't get what was going on. Um, and then Apocalypse, I didn't see, I didn't even know about Apocalypse until recently. And I guess that's with that same cast. So now I'm like, okay, so there's more of this that I'm missing. So I need to see those two movies. Then I need to see Dark Phoenix. I think I'm understanding what it is now, but I'm like, the thing is, if you see them all, you're not going to go like, oh, it's clear. It's clear as day. Now you're going to go, oh, it's still very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> like like okay yeah. marvel's getting getting the x-men back but what they're really getting is a big knotted ball of christmas lights that they have to unravel themselves <laughs> that's funny Man, um, just start start over <laughs> you know yeah cast. that's what i would do if i was them what i really want to see from marvel is wesley snipes as blade bring him back yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. bring him back i was th i was thinking they they should have put him in uh, the last Avengers movie, just like at least a freaking cameo. I mean, he he was the first Blade was the first Marvel movie that rocked, and uh, to completely ignore it is just sad. Mm. Yeah, they still have high hopes. They'll bring them back. They're crazy if they don't. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, I think they could for sure. Um, I. Uh, as far as the um, X Men stuff too, one thing I keep thinking about that I'm confused about was um, Mystique. Was she played by two different people, or I feel like she was in the. I feel like um, what's her name? Why can't I think of her name? The uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Like I feel like she was in the original cast and in First Class cast. No, that was uh, that Ro was the Romaine. Day um, Romaine lettuce. She was married to John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's her name. 
<laughs> but I mean, it was just a blue girl, so it could have been a stunt woman. Kind of didn't matter in a way. Yeah, but I think I I remember that um, Jennifer Lawrence was Mystique. So I, I feel like I think I might have seen Days of Future Past, and I think that's maybe what confused me because isn't both cast kind of in that movie? Or no? Am I wrong? There's, there I feel like there was one, one movie the where like both. I can't, I can't remember which one of the convoluted X Men had both cast, but there was one with both cast. Days of Future okay. Past. Okay, so I think I did see that, and I remember. I think I was really confused by that movie i think that's probably the biggest one that messes people up maybe <laughs> people should My, read the comics they are a hundred and the, i like the movie but the comics are where the story came from and it's way better yeah i need to read those for sure i wanted to but i i was actually trying to find like a good collection of like the days of future past story but yeah. um and i think I had, that was burning yeah. claremont that was the yeah. classic classic yeah. age of x-men you know yeah yep. so i still want to get get to that for sure i actually bought um i don't know if you guys have seen this uh x-men grand design i've been getting those comics by um ed piscar or whatever um and they actually go through like the history and stuff i guess of of uh of x of x-men and stuff and um yeah, I don't know. It, it's I haven't read these yet either, though, so I, I'm looking forward to reading them. <laughs> all, all the movies are fun. Uh, personally, I like First Class best, and that pretty much stands on its own. Yeah. You know, I mean, Kevin Bacon as a villain is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I definitely like the First Class stuff. Um I, I like it all, really. Um, I have Wolverine Origins, and I know everybody hates that one, um, but I feel like I remember liking that one too. I, it's been a long time since I've watched it. Um, you know, I mean, my favorite so far probably is Logan. Like that movie was brilliant. Um, that yeah, one got me emotional. It hit all kinds of spots. The only thing I don't love about it is the beginning where he drops the f-bomb like 200 times um because <laughs> i don't have a problem with the f-bomb but it seemed like it was forced it was like okay i get it you can swear now cool <laughs> <laughs> I've, they, were, I've been they, were like, they were like the censors are only gonna let you curse 400 times so you better get that in the way <laughs> <laughs> i've been watching uh doom patrol it's just dc streaming yeah man man i'm in it it's really good, but they're cursing left and right, and it's just like it's overly much. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm no prude, but it's like, come on, you you can't think of better other words. <laughs> it kind of rem reminds me of like '80s pay TV where they cursed just because they could, and it was obvious. That's kind of yeah. what that they, they're doing a little bit to go. Hey, we're not a kid show, by the way. I know <laughs> there's a there's a robot and stuff, so but. It's not a kid show. It's like you don't have to keep reminding me. I know what the Doom Patrol is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. I want to get back to the chat here a little bit. There's been some discussion. Um, uh, Mario says, uh, I wanted to see the Captain Marvel from the 80s. I don't know not anything about this new one, so I'll wait to see it on cable or Netflix. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, that's the thing. Like, does any? I don't know. Is is really there any legacy to Captain Marvel? Like, I don't think any. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of people, people like that really girl with the afro from, from any the of like, iterations. Yeah. What'd you say, Creed? Oh, it, it just seems like a lot of a lot of people really like that middle Captain Marvel, the the girl with the afro. Yeah, and we might be seeing her. Oops, spoilers. I myself, I uh, uh, think it's kind of <laughs> dirty that they stole Billy Batson's name and then didn't even use it in the movie. Like that's that's dirty. That is that's I don't know. I'm I'm just a big original Captain Marvel fan, and I really it stuck in my craw that they took his name. Like hmm. they sued DC. DC can't call him Captain Marvel, but they didn't sue me. I can. <laughs> well, who's Billy Batten's Batson in the Marvel Universe? <laughs> yeah, he's some kid that has his name stolen. You know, he looks for him in the background somewhere. Uh, I, 
I know the I know the uh, Captain Marvel from the eighties, and that's that's the Captain Marvel I love, 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 um, because it was kind of a Shazam thing with uh, Rick. Uh, I forget his last name. Uh, he was like a, a rock and roller kid um, that clanged his his wristbands together and became Captain Marvel. Drove around in an RV like every superhero does. They they switched. Like Captain Marvel was stuck in a in a in a in a different dimension, and when uh, the kid clanged his wristbands, Captain Marvel came to you know our reality, uh, and then the kid was lost in the other dimension. So it was a kind of nifty idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know much to be honest about um, Captain Marvel, uh, so. Pretty much this movie is my introduction. Um, let's see. Uh, Muttman says, Cloudy, I'm assuming he's saying Cloudy with the side of meatballs. Yeah, okay, see, is one of the best animated films of the last 20 years. That's awesome. I don't, I don't think I've seen it, but uh, it, it's always been something that I thought might be cool. Um, Michael says it would have been cool to have them do the onslaught story where they actually killed off a lot of the main Avengers. <laughs> um, well, they kind of did kill off a lot of the main Avengers. Stay, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> um, here. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, Mario says, I want to see Rom space night on Netflix. I hope they do it. I, I'm big down for that. That sounds awesome. The only problem is that's not Marvel anymore. Oh, it's not. No, uh, well, comic rights. I went to IDW, but I can't remember the com. I think it was the. I think it was the toy company actually owned ROM, so they took that back from Marvel, and and now they're letting IDW make it. But hmm. yeah, he's not in Marvel anymore, which. Is weird. Well, Thanks. then it will be on Netflix, and not you know, like because everything Marvel is going to, you know, Disney.com or whatever yeah. streaming. Hmm. Cool. Um, <clears throat> Michael says, Kubo and the Two Strings was a pretty dark animated film, but I really dug it. I haven't heard of that. I, I've heard of it. I got to watch that. Um, yeah, it looked uh, interesting. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, Didi stopped in. How you doing, Didi? It's good to hey. see you in the um, chat. Uh Let's see. Michael says the original was Rebecca Roman Stamus. There you go. Mystique, I'm assuming. Yeah, Mystique. And Mario but, says he has to go. Be well. Cool, man. Thanks for stopping in. Take care, Mario. Um, and with that, it, I think it's about time. Um, I got to wrap this up. But, uh, um, you know, I think it was a, a good discussion. And again, you know, nice, nice guys can win <laughs> and nice women can win. Um, so um, I just want to highlight that fact that like, there's no, there's no reason um, why, I mean, again, if that's who you are and you want to be kind of controversial, that's totally cool. Like there's a reason why there's people in the world who do that, you know, that it brings up interesting discussion and stuff, but you don't have to do, don't feel like you have to do that. You can be a nice guy and still win kind of like Mark Crilly and others who like Mark Crilly just got 3 million subscribers. Pretty awesome. Um, so it's just, I'm not saying he's better than anybody. All I'm saying is that, you know, it just shows that, you know, nice guys can do some good stuff too. So um, you don't have to be too crazy. You don't have to be crazy and controversial. And speaking about nice guys, um, Creed, how, let, let everybody know once again um, where they can find your stuff. Uh, I post daily minimum at, over on Instagram as Creed Stonegate. And uh, my YouTube channel is Infinite Coolness with Creed Stonegate, which is still in limbo a little bit, but um, I have plans. And, and actually, uh, people have messaged me that they like, hey, I subscribe because I saw you on Marsh's show. So thanks, Marsh. Oh, that's so cool. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> I love to hear something like that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and another nice guy, Mr. Peter Palmiotti. How's uh, let, let everybody know where they can find you and stuff. 
if you just uh, type in my name, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, DeviantArt, other places, everything as Peter Palmiati. And uh, yeah, currently working on my anthology story, The Griffin. So uh, I'm, I'm been live streaming as of late, so I'll be live streaming in a couple hours probably. Uh, so you can come check it out. He is the Peter P Palmiotti on the internet. <laughs> That's awesome. And again, um, you can find the links to everybody's stuff down below in the description. It's already there. And you guys know where you can find me here on my YouTube channel, Marsh Makes Comics, DonkeyJawProjects.com, and Patreon.com slash DonkeyJawProjects if you want to get some fresh new comic awesomeness every month. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Thanks everybody in the chat for hanging out. Um, and thank you everybody for, um, watching on the replay and, and however you're watching you guys rock and we will talk to you next time. Bye. <laughs>